Good morning and welcome to St. Agnes. Today we celebrate the seventh Sunday in ordinary time. Our readings for today's liturgy can be found in the back of the hymnal, and that is number 1127. 1127. Our entrance hymn is number 553, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, number 553. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, every virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the whole Israelite community and tell them, be holy for I, the Lord, your God, am holy. You shall not bear hatred for your brother or sister in your heart. Though you may have to reprove your fellow citizen, do not incur sin because of him. Take no revenge and cherish no grudge against your people. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person, for the temple of God, which you are, is holy. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you considers himself wise in this age, Let him become a fool so as to become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of God. 
For it is written, God catches the wise in their own ruses. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. So let no one boast about human beings, for everything belongs to you, Paul or Apollos or Cephas, or the world or life or death, or the present or the future. All belong to you, and you to Christ, and Christ to God. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, An eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, Offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn the other one as well. If anyone wants to go to the law with you over your tunic, hand over your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you, and do not turn your back on one who wants to borrow. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be children of your heavenly Father. For he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good, and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Every three years in the church calendar, we get to journey with Jesus through the Gospel of Matthew. In year A, this is year A that we're in, has begun in the Advent season, continues all the way until December. Um, and especially in this season of ordinary time, on this seventh Sunday of ordinary time, we continue through the most famous and greatest sermon ever given, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. This is the fourth installment, which, we, which will be our last for this year, of this greatest sermon, which actually continues for another two chapters of Matthew's Gospel. We began at the sermon's beginning three weeks ago in hearing the Beatitudes and learning how we really share in the blessings of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all those things were blessings of Jesus before there were blessings of his followers, his disciples. We continued in the fifth Sunday after that to hear 
of our share in the commission of Christ, that is to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world, so that others may give glory to our Heavenly Father. Last Sunday and today, we hear how we are to share in the mind and in the heart of Jesus. We heard last week how our Lord fulfills the law of the Old Covenant. He did not come to destroy it, but to bring it to its completion. And that means turning away not only from murder and adultery, but giving over our hearts and our minds to be purified from anger and lust within the heart and the mind. Now we hear more positively what sharing in the merciful heart of Jesus looks like for us. And we probably notice quickly the difficulty of Jesus' words to us today, as they must have been difficult words for his disciples to hear then. In conversation with your own friends, I suspect it's pretty uncommon that you would hear a serious objection to the Ten Commandments, or at least for the Seven Commandments uh, to, to honor our neighbor. Everyone is tempted to disobey, of course, and many will make excuses for themselves in this or that particular situation. But I think you won't often hear your friends argue that in principle it's a good thing to dishonor your parents, kill, commit adultery, steal, bear false witness, and covet, or foster that spirit of envy um, over your neighbor's goods and uh, over your neighbors themselves. But no false go- uh, to put no false gods before the one true God, to honor his name and to keep his, his um, Sabbath are greater calls uh, for those, but uh, for, for those uh, who share the Christian faith, I think they will recognize those too even if they fail some at times to live up to those commandments, that they recognize those are good and uh, that so that we need to live up to those, that those, that the the commandments themselves are good. Jesus' teaching today is likely to stir up much more controversy, I think. So uh, we have to look at, so what are we to make of Jesus' commands? Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn the other one as well. Well, let's consider what Jesus does not say, first of all. We do not hear him say ever in the gospel, if a man comes at you with a sword or running at you with a dagger, uh, let him do whatever he wants. Uh, we also don't hear him say uh, to turn the cheeks of your wife and your children, uh, that uh, those who are within your care, your responsibility. This is not then an ideology of pacifism under any circumstances, that uh, we are just to accept any evil and not, um, not stand up for what is true and what is right, and not uh, offer any physical resistance Uh, for the defense of our lives or for those of others whom uh, we are responsible for. It is not a giving of permission or license for others to sin without any correction. What he does say then, Jesus speaks of getting a slap in the face. I think we could take this as a literal or a figurative slap in the face. How many times are we spurred to anger, which leads to vengeance because of something that amounts to a slap in the face? Because of our fallen nature, our concupiscence, or that inclination to sin which still remains within us, we want to get back at another person. We tell ourselves maybe it's only fair, and we consequently forget all about helping the other person back on the right path that um, becoming blindsided to our, our true goal of helping being, to be an instrument of that person's conversion, to correct what was wrong, and instead uh, to take out our vengeance on the person and make an enemy of them. Moses already restrained vengeance by punishing retaliation that escalated the harm that was done. That God's people should not knock out three teeth for losing one tooth in a brawl. Moses Moses made known to people an understanding really of God's justice, that it is not just doing whatever you can get away with, it is not uh, might that makes right, but uh, that God uh, is a just God and requires his disciples, his, his people to be just as well. Jesus goes further though. He makes known to his disciples 
not only God's justice, but his mercy. After Jesus was, arrest, was arrested, we might remember, he was taken before the high priest to be questioned, and an officer struck our Lord, the, only, the, the truly innocent one. We know that angels accompanied their Lord and would have been ready to respond at his command to do whatever he asked. But Jesus does not retaliate in this circumstance or any. He responds not with vengeance, but with correction, saying, if I have spoken wrongly, bear witness to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? So we too can, can look to do that the same, not to make an enemy of the person who considers us an enemy and to, uh, to give back tit for tat, but uh, to seek that conversion of heart, to seek that correction that, that places them on the, uh, back on the right path. So we see in, in, uh, in our Lord Jesus living this out himself um, with, uh, with that heroic courage. Jesus does not just raise the bar or turn up the intensity on his commandments. He shows us the way and makes it possible for us to become like him in doing the same thing. If you are insulted, then don't return an insult. We know when somebody strikes us, if somebody hits you, the natural response is to strike back in retaliation, whether that's physically or with words or with their, their actions that have their consequences to, to make your life difficult, uh, that uh, bring some insult upon you. You're thinking, I didn't deserve that, and think that your dignity as a human person has been undermined by the other person's offense. Jesus, though, helps us to, to correct that, that, uh, that offering us that, that, um, that it is not in the other person in which we seek our dignity. He continues, if anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, hand over your cloak as well. I know we don't uh, really wear tunics and cloaks uh, these days, but uh, that tunic is something of an undergarment, and the cloak, of course, being the outer garment. So if somebody goes to court uh, to haul you to court over your undergarments, give them your outer garments as well. Well, this too, I think we could see as something of an, of an insult, that, uh, that somebody would be so petty to do that, to, uh, to get a lawyer and, and take a person to court over something so small and uh, so petty. And yet, uh, he's asking his disciples not to give in to that pettiness and to return that, uh, that hostility for hostility, but uh, to instead to respond with mercy. Fighting over your material possessions naturally causes that, that strain, that anxiety. What is the remedy in this case? Not vengeance, but detachment. Not worrying about uh, the things that we have, but uh, considering first and foremost the, uh, the heart of the other person. He continues, were you pressed into service that you didn't volunteer for? Well, then in that case, give your time and effort, effort willingly and lovingly, because this is what Christ shows us even in taking up his cross. The cross in itself was a wicked instrument of torture unto death. That um, was certainly understood to be that in, in Jesus' day. But Jesus' willing sacrifice has made that cross holy. It has become now, uh, be through, his, uh, through his selfless offering, it has become to us the greatest symbol of his love and his mercy for us, that uh, brought about our redemption, that uh, poured out his mercy and continues to do so for us. You are children of your heavenly Father. This is where our Lord Jesus makes it clear uh, where we find our dignity, where we find that, that source of God's mercy. He's not just increasing the requirements for us, but that he gives us what we need to live them out. That is what Jesus Christ has made for you and me to be, as sons and daughters of his heavenly Father. When God himself is the source of our dignity, we no longer need to avenge ourselves over insults. We are enabled to be generous and merciful because of the mercy that we receive from God especially the mercy of the gift of his Son, who willingly offered himself selflessly for our salvation. So when we hear the command given through Moses, be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy, and the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect, we should not think our Lord is calling us to some un impossible task, something that would never be possible for us in this lifetime. 
Yes, of course, it's impossible in our humanity, but the Lord our God makes it possible for us. Your perfection will come from him and through our Lord Jesus Christ. He will make it possible because when we open our hearts to his mercy, he makes us like him. To take on the heart and the mind of Jesus Christ and to be living vessels of his mercy to others. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we now make our prayer for our community and for the world, let us all pray to Christ the Lord, not only for ourselves and our own needs, but for the entire people. For all of our church leaders, especially Pope Francis, Bishop Burbage, and our parish priests, that they will preach the gospel with courage and conviction. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nations, that together we will promote the common good of all, safeguard the sanctity of marriage and the family, and defend the rights to life and to religious freedom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice, security, and peace among nations, and for those who serve in our law enforcement, military intelligence, and diplomatic services to make peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the end of war in Ukraine, the withdrawal of Russia, and the restoration of justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians who face persecution and genocide, especially in communist and Islamic countries, that the Holy Spirit will keep them strong in the faith, and for all non-believers, that the Holy Spirit will move them to faith in our divine Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the victims of the earthquake in Syria and Turkey, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the acceptance of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that young men and women from our own families will heed Christ's call and offer their lives to him who gave his life for us. And for our parish seminarians, Deacon Tony Bennett, Deacon Mike Nugent, James Joseph, Gabrielle Godet, Michael Gibbons, and John Anthony Bonuno, and for Sister Monica Baptiste Whalen and Sister Abigail Teresa Jones, novices for the Dominican Sisters in Nashville. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and homebound, especially Arsenia Pignon, and for our deceased, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For John and Amal Anthony, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal intentions held in the quiet of our hearts.
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Incline your merciful ear to our prayers, we ask, O Lord, and listen in kindness to the supplications of those who call on you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. This weekend, there will be a special second collection forwarded to the Bishop Disaster Relief Fund. These funds will provide emergency assistance such as food, water, shelter, and medical care for the victims of the earthquake in Syria and Turkey. Thank you for your generosity. Our offertory hymn is 700, where charity and love prevail, number 700. <laughs> Brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
Through you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all those who are holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, 
so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Just a few announcements as the second collection is being taken up for relief efforts in Syria and Turkey. Our poor box collection this weekend is for the poor Clares, cloistered community of sisters in Alexandria who depend upon others for their livelihood. Just a few reminders, please turn in your raffle tickets to help support the work camp teens this summer. Also, we still need two male chaperones for work camp. So for all the boys that want to attend, to attend, they need two chaperones. So we need some chaperones. And next, this week, Wednesday, we mark Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent. So please take home a copy of the bulletin. You'll find the times for masses on Ash Wednesday with the distribution of ashes, then also Stations of the Cross. There's opportunities for almsgiving, like our food drive for Madison County, babies' items for a woman's choice, meals for the poor. So many good service possibilities. Also, so President's Day is on Monday, so we only have the 9 a.m. Mass. Offices are closed. St. Joseph's League meets on Thursday. All men of the parish are invited to attend. Saturday, there's the retreat contemplating the cross with St. Mary Magdalene in the parish hall. Again, information's in the bulletin. It'd be a good way to start our Lent. And then lastly, we're having a special presentation about the apparitions in Lourdes of our Blessed Mother. Part of the focus of the presentation will be on the scientific evidence regarding the miracles attributed to our Blessed Mother's intercession. So a lot of things going on. Again, Lent begins Wednesday, so it's a good time to plan ahead. May God bless you. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our recessional hymn is 632, For the Beauty of the Earth. 